Hello, my CNC brother or sister. I'm Garrett, CEO of IDC Woodcraft, the company that you get your CNC router bits from to make your amazing CNC projects. In this video, we're gonna talk about something called T-Tracks for your CNC router. T-Tracks are a quick method to place your clamps around your CNC project and remove those clamps easily and gives you a lot of flexibility. IDCwoodcraft.com in this video, what I'm going to cover is what are T-Tracks, why I chose T-Track system for my alt mill CNC router, a new CNC router I got, how to uh, install it and considerations you want to take when installing T-Tracks on your CNC router. We'll talk a little bit about the clamping methods. We're going to dive into the pros and cons of T-Tracks, and then I'm going to give you my conclusion as to whether you think you might want to consider installing T-Tracks on your CNC router. And of course, I'll have links down below in the description if you want to go ahead and start considering T-Tracks and getting them for your machine. So, first of all, what is the T-Track system? So, if you look at my alt mill CNC router, you see all these black channels here, and they're mounted about eight inches apart. And these channels are U-shaped channels where a bolt will fit in there and you use a special clamp right here that has that bolt with a handle and that bolt or the, the clamp will slide up through that track and then you can tighten the handle and you can clamp right down on your project. So just to give you a quick example of how fast T-Tracks are, I've got my T-Tracks here and I'm gonna take four clamps and we're just gonna put them right in the channel. If I can get the bolt turned the right way, there we go. One, two, three, and four. And then we can position our project wherever we want and then you can take your clamps and clamp it down quickly and efficiently and you can move the clamps wherever you want to on the, on the, uh, on the project and then we just tighten it down and we are ready to rock and roll once I make sure my project is lined up. So when you're done, basically all you have to do is loosen everything up, slide your clamps back out, put them wherever you're storing them and then you can reposition your next project and put the clamps on and take them off quickly. So that's basically what a T-Track system is. The, the thing about T-Tracks is it's very quick, but we'll dive into that. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about why I chose to use T-Tracks and why you might wanna consider them as well. So the first thing is basically the size of my alt mill CNC router. This has a four foot by four foot cutting area. And when I wanna put a spoil board on here, I would have to make a four foot by four foot spoil board. And when it comes time to replace that spoil board, I've gotta replace the whole thing. Now I'm gonna give you an example of my long mill CNC router over here so you get an idea of what I'm talking about. When you look at my long mill CNC router here, I've got a 34 by 48 spoil board here. And when it comes time to replace the spoil board, I literally have to cut a brand new piece that size and then get it bolted down and resurface the whole thing. On top of that, making this spoil board, I used a lot of inserts as opposed to something called track, where I can use those inserts to clamp my projects. So if you look down here, I've got this threaded insert right here. That's a quarter 20 insert. And I have them all the way across this board. You can see all these holes. So when it comes to my alt mill CNC router, which is a big bed, I don't want to, re want to replace the entire spoil board when it comes time to replace it to create all these inserts. And that's why I chose the T-Track system. So I can uh, um, just put clamps in and out as I want. But also if I want to replace a part of the spoil board, I don't have to replace the whole thing. All I have to do is make a new insert or two in order to replace what I need to have replaced. Of course, when any, anytime you replace any component of your spoil board, you have to resurface the whole thing. So that's why I went with the T-Track system. It makes 
positioning my clamps a lot faster and it makes replacing the spoil board a lot easier. So let's talk a little bit about how to install T-Track, the things you want to consider while you're doing that and how it's assembled. So first of all, as I said before, T-Track is a series of U-channels where a bolt will fit in there. And it's got a bunch of holes in it, as you can see right here, here, here on this piece. And that is screwed down into a base plate. Now, if you look down here at the front of my alt mill, I've got a base plate here where the T-Track is mounted to. So you need to have some kind of base where this T-Track can actually be screwed into. That's the first thing. The second thing when it comes to T-Track is actually positioning the tracks. Now, one of the things is the actual gap that you create between tracks. You never want more than eight inches and less than six inch gap between tracks. Right now, I'm at an eight inch spread, but you can certainly go narrower. And the reason you wanna take that into account, the, the width is because clamps only have a certain distance with which you can position them uh, to go over your, pro your project to clamp it down. So for example, let's take a look at this clamp here. So this clamp here has a bit of an adjustment. And when I install it on the track, and then I install another clamp on the next track over here, and I give my clamps the full push out, I've got about two inch spread there. So that's actually pretty good. That's very close for most CNC projects. Uh, but if you actually go more than eight inches, then you may start to run into some limitations about where you can place your clamps and the size of the projects that you can put on. So those are the two main considerations when using T-Track is that you have to have something to screw your T-Track down to, and you also need to consider the spacing never any more than eight inches and no less than six inches. So I wanna to talk to you a little bit about installing T-Track. As you look on my spoil board here, I've got a track then eight inches over another track, eight inches, eight inches. So I have seven tracks on my machine and then I have a piece of MDF in between each track. So when we put a track down, the first thing you wanna do is position your outermost track and screw it down and that's exactly what I did here. And then what you'll do is to take the rest of your track and stack it up. So basically we'll pretend this piece is a piece of track and I'm going to just slide it right against that piece of track and then the next piece of track. So all seven tracks that I have used, I would stack up against the first one that's bolted down. And then what I would do and what you'll need to do, this just makes it the easiest way to get the width of the spoil board pieces, is once all your track is settled, set down, you'll just take a measurement all the way to the end of your spoil board this way, and then divide that number by however many pieces of track you're uh, going to the uh, inside each track. So in this case, I have seven pieces of track, and I've got six pieces of spoil board on here. So I would divide that measurement by six. Now, one of the things with tree track when you're installing it is these pieces don't have to be an exact fit, like super tight in between each piece of track. It can be less, there can be a gap there. The idea is you just wanna have the track there. I mean, you can see here on mine, it is butted right up against there. I was being a little bit too much of a perfectionist. <laughs> but so once I had that, uh, the, the measurement and I cut these pieces, then I put a piece down, track, piece, track, piece, track, and when everything was set in place, then I secured the outermost track on this side by putting a few screws in to hold it down, and then I started piecing the rest of them together. Of course, I pre-drilled my spoil board. You can see all the spoil board has a pretty consistent hole pattern across it, and all the screws, these are all purpose screws that are down in here, and they're all recessed three eighths of an inch or half the thickness of the spoil board. <laughs> now, one of the things I wanted to make sure that I could do was maximize uh, for a four, a four foot piece of material like plywood. And so in the alt mill here, there's plenty of space on here, this machine opening is 52 inches wide. 
but it has a 49 inch stroke. In other words, the maximum movement forward is 49 inches and the maximum movement this way is 49 inches. And with MDF, when you buy it from the store, it comes in 49 inches wide by eight foot one inches. So I am taking advantage of that extra inch of of that spoil board and just left it here and then put the track on this side and put the track on the other side. And now I have 48 inches between both pieces of MDF. I can put a four foot wide piece of um, plywood down and I can still use the outermost T tracks to hold the, pro the project down. And I have excess material or excess space here. So I've made some spacers here so that I can arrest the uh, support bolt from the clamps on the outside of that material. So the setup is fairly easy, it takes a little bit of time, but once you've got it set up, it's literally done. And there are benefits to this system, which I'll talk to you about when we talk about pros and cons. But first I wanna to talk to you a little bit about clamping. First of all, you saw this over the top type of clamp that we use. I showed you that in the beginning of the video where that will slip in there and then and then the clamp will go down you can position it wherever you want as because because i haven't used t-track yet to make any projects um, i'm not sure of all the uses you can do with it but the other thing you can do is actually create yourself a fence and you can have a fence mounted down and secure that and still take advantage of tracks in some way. And the clamps that I show you here, which is the over the top clamp, you can also use the cam clamps if you set yourself up properly here. Now I am not finished setting up all the type of clamping methods for this machine. It's still uh, just about ready to run. I just have to surface the spoil board. So those are a couple ways that you can use T-Tracks to hold your CNC projects down with clamps. Now, because I haven't used mine yet, I don't know of all the ways. So if you have T-Track on your CNC router, put down in the comments what you think about it, how beneficial it is, some of the drawbacks that you've experienced with it. And that is what we're gonna talk about now, uh, some of the pros and cons that I have figured out already with T-Track. And then we're gonna get it into my conclusion and why you might wanna consider getting this. And of course, like I said, there's links down below in the description. So let's cover the pros and cons of T-Tracks as far as I have figured out so far. And we're gonna start with the pros. The first pro that I see with this is you can position your clamps really, really fast and you can slide them off really fast. And that is a big convenience when it comes to CNC routers. Clamping sometimes takes us some time. This is just super quick. The next one that I really, really like is this is a one and done method. In other words, once you have everything set down, bolted in place, you never have to mess with it again. And the big thing is you can use other clamping methods for holding your projects down. In other words, uh, screwing your projects down, you can use the CA glue technique. And here's why, if you come up close to this, you can see that the T-Track is about maybe 5 sixteenths down below the top surface of the spoil board. And so what that does is that allows me to put painter's tape down and use my CA glue or double-sided tape without interfering with the T-Tracks. So I'm still very flexible in how I can use or choose to hold my CNC projects down. One of the other benefits, which I already talked about in the beginning, is spoil board replacement. If I need to replace something, I just cut one piece and I replace it. And then of course I'll have to resurface it, but it doesn't take up a whole four by four sheet of MDF when it comes time to replace the spoil board. And in case you're new to CNC routers, a spoil board is considered a consumable. Over time, you're gonna start cutting into it and eventually it's gonna be so chopped up that you're gonna to have to replace it. And so that's why I'm talking about replacing your spoil board. So benefits, fast clamp positioning, it's a one and done. You have a lot of clearance to use other clamping methods and it makes it easy to replace your spoil board with smaller pieces. So let's talk a little bit about the cons. <clears throat> one of the things that I see as a drawback is the style of clamps that we use on T-Track generally is a pretty high profile clamp. And what that means is 
When you look at it from the side, this clamp has a lot of clearance space over the top. And so the problem with that is that you have to be careful about the tool path that your router bit is going to take. These clamps generally have a, like a one inch uh, height over the project. And if your router bit runs across that area, it's gonna run into that clamp. It's a lot easier to hit that clamp. So you always wanna take that into account where you're gonna position your clamps when you design your CNC projects. The good thing is with the Vectric design software, which is what I recommend, and I will also link down below, it has a feature in it where you can create no pass zones. Basically, you can tell the software and design into it where your clamps are gonna be, and you're telling it, this is where my clamps are gonna be. Don't ever put a tool path in the way of that that area. So it's a really nice feature to take into account. So the clamp clearance can be an issue where you can actually hit it with your router bit and break your router bit. Another one is clamp placement. You do have a bit of a limitation as to where you can place your clamps. You are limited to the tracks themselves and then also the, the, the stroke of the clamp, if you will. So that's another limitation. Also, you wanna have strong clamps. I'm gonna put a link for the types of clamps that I would prefer. The ones I have here are not very strong, so I'm gonna replace them. Uh, you just wanna make sure you have strong clamps. Take a look at those links and you'll see. Uh, also, like I said, there'll be T-Track links down below. And by the way, you can get T-Tracks in lengths of two foot, three foot, and four foot. So what I would recommend is you buy the length that you want plus. In other words, I accidentally bought three foot pieces here, and so I had to cut another piece in half in order to get my full four foot length. So just make sure you, um, you, you've got the length that you need for your CNC. Another drawback on these is the clamps that are generally used often have these thumb, these thumb wheels on them, and that means you're hand tightening the clamp down. And so you want to make sure if you are hand tightening a clamp as opposed to using some kind of tool to impact it down, that that clamp is secured tight. And one of the last cons is I've seen it where people don't zero their project properly and they actually cut too deep in the spoil board and cut across the, the, the track itself. That's not that big of a deal because your CNC router bits are made of carbide and they're cutting through aluminum, which is what the tracks are made of. So the bits will run right through it, but it happens from time to time. So you have a hard material or harder material that's inside your spoil board that can possibly cause a little bit of an issue. The final thing is something I didn't take into account when I was putting this together, and that's making room for a rotary if you want to get to that. So I have a rotary system over here that I am going to set up on this machine. And the rotary is actually going to have to be recessed down into the spoil board just a little bit. I have to set it up so I can take it on and take it off. So I'll just make a video about that at uh, whenever I make it. But it's just something to think about to plan on rotary if you think you're gonna go in that direction. So we've covered pros and cons, fast clamp positioning, it's one and done, it doesn't interfere with other methods to hold your CNC projects down, it makes it easier to, to replace your spoil board cons as your clamps sit up high, there can be a clearance issue with your router bit, the clamp placement can be a little bit limiting, so if you wanna do six inch instead of eight inch, you'll have a bit more flexibility. The hand tightening, you wanna make sure you do that. And of course the rotary, and you can cut into the tracks. And of course you need to think about rotary before you actually do your whole spoil board. So uh, before we get to my personal feeling about this so far, is I wanna answer a couple of questions I've been asked about T-Tracks. And one is, can I use T-Track systems for my CNC router, basically for any CNC router. And the answer is absolutely. You can install T-Track on any CNC router. You just follow what I have pointed out, that you need a base plate to put your T-Track uh, secure it to, and you're ready to go. And the other question is, can I modify my T-Track system? You can do whatever you want with it. So the answer is yes. And Again, I mentioned about track links. Make sure you get the right length. Links will be down below. So here is my final thoughts about T-Tracks and whether you might want to consider it for your CNC router. First of all, my experience with this, it was fairly easy to put on. It didn't take a lot of thought process once I figured out how I needed to 
uh, how wide I needed to make my spoil board pieces and where I was going to place my track. The other thing that I like about it a lot is that this is a one and done system and it is very flexible with the other clamping methods that are out there. CA glue and double-sided tape and nailing your projects down. And of course, the idea with the size of this machine. So the alt mill is a brand new machine. I'm very excited about it. I've done some trial runs with it. I haven't cut a project yet, but this thing moves fast. And I will put a uh, couple links down below in the description if you want to see some videos I created on a little bit of that and some of the other alt mill videos out there. At the end of the day, I think T-Tracks is a really good way to go. I never considered them before until now when I was looking at all this space and going, what am I going to do about a spoil board? So at the end of the day, I think it's a really good choice to really consider T-Tracks for your CNC router just because of the flexibility that you still have with it and things are all set up for you to continuously just put your clamps in and take them out. So again, if you're interested in that, you can go take a look at them. They're, I've got the links down in the description. If you have experience with T-Tracks, share in the comments your pros and cons with T-Tracks and whether you recommend them as well. And of course, if this video is helpful, then take a minute to like and subscribe because I create a ton of videos for beginners who are just getting into CNC router and things like this as I'm learning to do this. And be sure to stop by idcwoodcraft.com for your CNC router pits and we will take care of you. Have a great CNC day and I'll talk to you next time. dcwoodcraft.com